hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. In the last episode, we were just about to get started on Chihiro's class trial. I am so excited for this. I'm really interested to see what I got wrong and what I got right, if I got anything right, that is. Now then, Monokuma is speaking. What do you think? I redecorated! Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? <laughs> Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Very nice. Good, good! You're ri raring to go! Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well? Okay then, let's get this show on the road. Thrills, chills, kills! Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith. A deadly class trial. Oh, uh, I, I literally saved less than a minute ago, so I'm all good. Okay, let's set our skills. We have, we have the things we learned from Chihiro. Helping us out, even in death. We have cheat code. The time limit doesn't decrease even if you shoot a statement with the silencer. Effective during the non-stop debate costs 2 SP. We can, we can more than afford that. And algorithm. Increases the speed of memorizing a statement. Effective during the non-stop debate costs 2 SP. And we still have, yeah, we have melodious voice equipped. Good stuff. Let's get started. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. I am actually kind of glad that Monokuma is going over this again. To be honest, I actually went and re-watched the previous class trial just so that I could remember all of the key bindings and stuff. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. All right then. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Oh, I can do that. It was the dumbbell. Make your arguments. Yep, the dumbbell. Chihiro's fatal there we injury. Go. It appears it was a head wound. True. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No! Lies! No, that's wrong! Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell, found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. Thank you, Kyoko, coming at us with that logic. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Well, she is the ultimate detective. Yay! That's so creepy! Kinda, but someone's gotta do it. Kyoko gives no shits. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. No, it isn't. You're just a hoe. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. No, it isn't. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? Oh, I wanted, 
I wanted to speak about this. I know everyone in game has been referring to Genocide Jack as male. I personally, I've been thinking of Genocide Jack as female simply because I know that Toko is a lady. That That isn't necessarily the case with DID and alters. While the, how do I want to put this? The host personality might be a cisgender woman. That doesn't necessarily mean the alters are. The alters could be, you know, uh, you know, male. They could be attracted to women. You know, it, it really doesn't matter what the host personality is. However, I have been thinking, based on my knowledge of serial killers, this this isn't a one hundred percent all the time thing. Okay, but the majority of the time, when you have a serial killer that targets specifically one gender, the killer is oftentimes the opposite gender. That is not a hard rule. That can, you know, there can obviously be outliers. But the majority of the time, if you have someone killing women, it's typically a man who hates women. If you have someone killing men, it's typically a woman who hates men. So I'ma put money on Genocide Jack on the altar being a woman. I'm, I want that, you know, noted down here and now, okay? Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Oh God. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease. Well, it won't, because we have a Chihiro special ability. So take careful aim when you have your silencer out. Oh no. Um, okay, so it's it's left mouse button to fire bullets. It's right to shoot the white noise. Got it. Okay. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. Oh, thank you. That in my action difficulty is set to gentle. Hooray! <laughs> thank you. I'm not... I'm not good with, you know, little like finicky tasks. That's, I'm not about that. Logic, I can do. But anything to do with movement, it trips me up so badly. In which case you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Thank you. Well then, good luck and have fun. Oh, that's such a relief. That's such a relief. Okay, um, considering- The culprit is Genocide Jack, I'm sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it. We have the case file. No, that's wrong! I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. Hold up, Makoto, why do you suddenly have this? We went to the archive looking for it and you couldn't find it. Makoto? Makoto, what? What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. I love that. Don't think about it. Don't question why it was there. Just forget about it. It's fine. Let's just keep going down this road. Oh, Piazzi, are you? More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. 
The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. I wish you could see my face right now. I Part of me's like, that should be the title, but then I'm like, YouTube won't let me have that. He foo me! He foo me! You fucking perv! Ah, uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Why are you making me do this? I don't believe your theory! Your theory is bullshit! The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, uh, the bloody message, where the murder took place, how the victim was positioned. I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. And Byakuya. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. No, they weren't. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? Because you are a bitch. There's only one logical answer I can think of. That you are a bitch. It's because the culprit in this case is the real genocide jack you know what i'm a i'm a grab that just because why not there we go no fucking way you're saying genocide jack is one of us probably i think so but she's innocent yes in fact it's toko oh sh he just be snitching Byakuya! Byakuya! what Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. She did say, I, I couldn't keep the promise I made you. I'm guessing I couldn't keep the promise that I wouldn't let Genocide Jack come out and kill anyone. Byakuya! Why are you like this? Seriously? You he don't, but I wish he was. What? what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle? Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? It does seem like a riddle in a way, but... I feel like I can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko. What does it mean? Oh, okay. Hangman's Gambit. Got it. This was the word one. Um... I don't... I'm... I have no idea what this could be. Um... It's got to be related to DID. Um, okay, we're getting S's, B's, L's, A. I, I have no idea. I have literal. No. No, they they're not. Um, oh God, I can't remember how to do this one. You bastards. Now I understand. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? That right there has pissed me off. That is the only thing I am genuinely angry about. 
Did they even bother doing any research? Any. Oh my god. One, schizo is a pretty offensive term for someone with schizophrenia, not fucking DID. Literally, like saying someone with DID is schizophrenic is like saying, oh, this is my child, Timmy. He has trouble with reading and writing. Oh, you mean he's depressed? No! Depression and dyslexia are literally not in any way linked. Schizophrenia, it's, um, oh god, I'm, I'm genuinely really pissed off about that. that like, like I said, I can't, part of me's like, it's from 2010, maybe back in 2010, schizo wasn't as offensive a term as it is today. It, Schizophrenia is a, um, it's categorised by paranoid delusions, uh, hearing voices in your head, that kind of thing. It's treated with antipsychotic medication, I'm pretty sure, antipsychotics. Um, literally doing a little bit of research into DID would have told them that there was no fucking connection. I'm genuinely so angry right now. I am real fucking angry at that. And I, here's the thing, I might be taking this a tad personally. I'm well aware of that, but it, here's the thing. Global media has always treated mental illness with such bullshit disdain. We got a horror film. Oh, uh, let's put a, a mentally ill person in it. They're the killer. You know, like when, whenever you see mentally ill people on TV, and it is getting better now. It's getting better, but for the vast majority of, you know, you know, the history of movies and video games and all of that the mentally ill person is the killer they're the person you should be scared of why because they're mentally ill oh how terrifying and i think the reason why i take that very personally is because i have a developmental disorder and we get treated in a very similar way we're not the killers we're the the mental you know like, we, we're treated like idiot savants, you know, oh, they're, they're a drooling imbecile, they can't take care of themselves, but if you put math in front of them, oh my god, they suddenly become a genius. We're never normal people, and neither are the mentally ill. We are never normal people just living our lives. We have our issues, but we deal with them, because for the most part, we're pretty fucking normal, and it... I need to calm down. <laughs> you know, I'ma take a sip. I'ma take a long sip from my drink and I'm gonna calm the fuck down. As I said, I I see a lot of overlap in how mentally ill people are treated and people with learning disorders and developmental disorders are treated and it pisses me off immensely and it it's like when i hear people like me be, be referred to as retarded i'm like no no that is bullshit you don't that's what I'm having right now. Referring to people with DID as being schizos is as offensive to me as someone calling me a retard. And I don't like it. I'm trying to be very careful with my words right now. I've already called the developers a bastard at this stage. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna just move on. I'm gonna just move on from that. It's it's whatever. 
Uh, Makoto says, is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality, which isn't schizophrenia? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have, what did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. At least you're going with the modern name. You're not going with the outdated name. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. You're a total bitch. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry for calling him a bitch. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality, it has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... I'm fine! I'm fine! <laughs> Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission that's right toko you tell them not to mention once she regained consciousness and saw chihiro's body again she was utterly calm in other words within her is one personality that can't handle blood and one that obviously can <laughs> so when toko trapped herself in her room it's because she was scared of genocide jack <laughs> I won't let Genocide Jack have control! I'll d drive out the killer! D drive out the murderous fiend! The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. know all this I do believe you misunderstood her what she's trying to say isn't how can you know all this no what she wants to know is how could you tell them Byakia Byakia why are you doing all of this huh? last night just before Monokuma gave his motive speech Toko and I had a strange conversation she told me a most interesting story so you couldn't even figure out that she was Genocide Jack. She told you. Oh, you. He's really not as clever as he likes to think he is, is he? She said a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! I'm just gonna put this out there, Toko. If you want to kill Byakuya, I'll be fine with that. You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. If you want to slit his throat right now, I would be A-OK -okay with that, Toko. Do it. Do it. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. And she didn't. You are a hoe. But in spite of that promise... <laughs> I 
I'm sorry, I, I couldn't keep her promise. But don't worry, never again. I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. Toko! Toko, no, no. Don't, you shouldn't be doing that. He's a hoe. You could do better. You could do so much better. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. I, I, I do kind of, you know, I kind of believe Byakuya when he says that. That that does sound like something that Toko would have thought he said, but that he didn't. That does not negate the fact that he is a hoe still. He is still a hoe. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? Yes, she could. You are full of crap. I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But... but... But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. Why are you being so mean to her? I hate you. That's right. That's right. Hate him. Kill him. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't mean... Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... Well, hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? One, this is a highly offensive portrayal of someone with DID. Two, that's not how tongues or eyes work. Three, Begrudgingly, I like the touch there. Genocide Jill. Th this is the only thing I'm gonna admit to liking about this entire situation. If, if you aren't aware, so clearly they were going Genocide Jack, Jack the Ripper. Among Ripperologists, that's people who are obsessed with, you know, figuring out how, who Jack the Ripper was. There is a theory that Jack the Ripper was actually a woman, and um, specifically a midwife, potentially. Uh, Jack the Ripper, one, whoever they were, they had to have intimate knowledge of Whitechapel, because that, that area of London, it's like a fucking labyrinth. Two, they had to have at least crude anatomical knowledge, so maybe a doctor or a butcher, something to that effect. However, a midwife would also have that knowledge and that theory that Jack the Ripper was actually a woman, they call it Jill the Ripper. I like that touch. Everything else about what I'm seeing, I fucking hate. This is awful. I'm probably still going to use it for my thumbnail because it is the most interesting image so far, but this is no. <laughs> What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. Is it? Is it? Because this strikes me as no one researched it. They just wanted to be edgy and cool. One of them happens to be a serial killer. You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. Uh, so what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? Uh, well, it, it happens to perpetrate the idea that people with mental illness should be feared and viewed with suspicion and hostility. And I don't like that. <laughs> so intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. 
Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> this is the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! This is... This is... And with that, I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next one, Genocide Jill will hopefully defend themselves and uh, call Byaki a hoe. At least that's what I'm hoping for. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.